course, if you look around you, you'll already see cash replacements in every aspect of daily life. We write checks, we swipe debit cards, we charge credit cards. Especially for the bigger transactions, this is already more convenient and safer than carrying a huge bag of wadge around. And online, the credit card is king. Those 16 digits are the only thing between you and mail order CDs, TVs, MP3s. In fact, 95% of all the world's money is actually already stored digitally, which means most payments never become physical cash. But the thing is, many really small payments, day-to-day -day transactions like buying some bread or a single train fare, are still made with cash. And it's this bit that many companies are keen to replace. So, let's see. First up, we'll use this phone. It's a prototype using a technology we've seen quite a bit of on Click, NFC, or Near Field Communication. The idea is you touch the phone against a reader and a special NFC chip in the phone gives it information about how to charge you. It's already being used in some parts of Asia for small transactions like buying drinks and paying for restaurant bills. Today, I'll be using it to get me onto the London Underground. This type of NFC uses the same tech as that in the Oyster cards that London commuters use on the tubes and the buses. After just four years, there are now 10 million Oyster cards in circulation, and cash now only accounts for 3% of all tube and bus transactions. Now, the chip inside this phone is actually smarter than the one in the Oyster card, because when you make a transaction, it'll charge your bank account. And in fact, you can tell it to charge different things to different accounts. So maybe all your food and drink purchases come from one and all your clothing purchases come from another. The mobile phone may be a convenient place for an NFC chip, but it's not the only place it can live. Both Visa and MasterCard have started putting NFC chips into their new credit cards. The idea is these will be used for small transactions like hmm, chocolates. Just hand them over, swipe the card and your balance is deducted. Thank you very much. Lunch. Right, this is Oliver Steely. He's from MasterCard, and they're behind this particular card. Oliver, hi. Good afternoon. Right, if someone was to pinch this out of my back pocket and run off with it, how secure is it? Would they be able to buy all of London on my behalf? They certainly wouldn't. Remember, this is for transactions only under £10, uh, and inside the card, there's quite a clever little clock or counter that checks how many consecutive contactless transactions you do. If it thinks you've done too many, it'll check you for your chip and pin. Just from doing the transaction, it doesn't seem to be that much quicker than chip and pin process, which would be entering it into the machine and typing in a four-digit code, you know, waving a card. Yes, it is a bit quicker, but, I mean, is it, is it really necessary to bring in a whole new technology? The shop that we're in is in a very busy street. There's four or five sandwich shops, and let me tell you this, when the people are walking up and down at lunchtime, what they're looking for is the shop with the shortest queue. Um, and if we can shave four or five seconds off every transaction, that makes a big difference to retailers at a busy time of day. But it makes the world go round. A secure, guaranteed card may well give cash a run for its money, but it's no use at all if you accidentally leave it at home. What you really need is something that you'll never lose, like, ooh, a body part. It's possibly the ultimate identification device, and it's being used in this prototype payment system in Germany. Registering your credit card details and then linking it with your fingerprint eliminates the need to enter those important 16 digits every time. Instead, you use just one. The concept of virtual cash has really come into its own with the explosion in online shopping. Every day, millions of us buy stuff in a way that we wouldn't have dreamed about doing 20 years ago. And while online stores have opened up a wealth of products and services to us, they've also created countless opportunities for credit card fraud. Chip and pin has actually made it more difficult for the fraudster to get hold of our card details in the real world because we're no longer handing over our card in bars, in restaurants and in shops and letting it out of our sight. However, what we're also seeing is that as the internet is becoming more popular for us as shoppers and many more businesses are offering um, goods and services online, so too are the fraudsters looking to really try and exploit the opportunities that the internet gives them. So how can you beat credit card fraud? Well, some companies are working on ways to avoid you having to enter a credit card number altogether. 
PayPal is already well known in the world of online shopping, especially since its tie-in with eBay. It basically allows you to make payments with a username and password, but only if the site offers a PayPal option. With the new PayPal plugin, that restriction goes away. Currently only available in the US, it's a downloadable application which gives you an extra button on your browser. When you come to check out on any site, you can use this plugin to generate a one-use only credit card number. And it's done. And if you've been following the rise and rise of Google over the last few years, it won't come as too much of a shock to hear that the web giant has set up its own rival online payment system. Again, you store your financial details in one place online. This time it's your Google account. Then it's just a case of entering your user ID if the shopping site has a tie-in with Google Checkout. And not far behind the big G is the big M, although Microsoft is suggesting that you don't tell us online at all. Using a feature of Windows Vista called Card Space, you keep all of your numbers from various credit cards and other information on your local machine in an e-wallet. Then, when you come to pay, only the payment methods which are accepted by this site appear in colour. Although still pre-launch, Microsoft eventually hopes to have us using these cards to do everything from logging on to paying bills. So, more convenience? Probably. Cheaper? Possibly. But there are those who would argue that no matter how much easier electronic money is than good old-fashioned cash, Wodge and Moolah just will not die.